Hi. Great drawing. Uh, done around 1527 by Hans Holbein, one of the great uh, realist painters of the Northern Europe at that time. Uh, this is before cameras. This is one that was a, a patient eye and a, and a practiced hand were, were your tools to come up with these incredible likenesses. Uh, the real drawing is about so big. Uh, that's Thomas More in the middle, and, and this is his family. Thomas More was the, one of the great scholars and theologians in the time of uh, Henry VIII. Uh, the drawing was for a painting. Uh, the painting was the first life-size group portrait uh, painted in Northern Europe during the Renaissance. It was a very important painting. The painting is lost now, though, and so was Thomas More's head. Uh, he was executed by Henry VIII because he wouldn't sign off on uh, Henry VIII usurping the power from the Pope back at that time, which is all part of a novel I'm reading. Uh, it's called uh, Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel, and it's a great book. I'm taking my time reading it because it's so so rich with stuff. Everybody in the book, virtually everybody, dozens of people were real people, with, and it matches up their dates of uh, birth, death, marriages, and the things they did. Uh, a huge part of invention is that the author uh, takes these puzzle facts and imagines the dialogues and motivations and the story that weaves it all together uh, into a compelling novel. Um, it, it's, it's a great piece of literature. Um, but there's two things about it that I wanted to talk about other than the fact that it's a great book, uh, which is that the first is that it takes place during the time of the Protestant Reformation. Now, the Protestant Reformation is Martin Luther. He's on the other side of the English Channel uh, when this book is going on. And we all know about it, but what the author does a really good job of is, is telling you what it's like back in 1520 uh, to have faith and that it wasn't just a part of your life, that it was, uh, it was woven into the fabric. Uh, from the king right down to the scullery he made, they were really concerned about their immortal soul. And, and the gist of the story is that uh, King Henry VIII is trying to get out of his first marriage because he, he, has been, he hasn't produced a, a prince or princess yet. And he wants to annul that marriage, and he can't because the Pope uh, runs a Catholic church. And there's these great shifts in religion at this time. And it's a problem for everybody, how they deal with it, how they change, what they hold on to. Um, and it's fascinating. And, and what's funny is just before this, I read this non-fiction book about uh, the conflicts between the Arab and the Christian world, which was all facts, which told me uh, about the importance of uh, religion being the fabric of, of lives. But it wasn't until I read this book that I could really imagine it. Uh, say the way we, uh, we think of Islam today, that you can't separate the religion from almost the, the, the culture of it. And so it was the fiction book that kind of brought that to light, uh, which I think is pretty neat. And the other thing that uh, I've enjoyed about it is um, the paintings by Hans Holbein. Uh, he's a character in the book because he painted virtually everyone in the court of Henry VIII. He painted Henry VIII, he painted Anne Boleyn, he painted Thomas Cromwell, he painted Thomas More. And of course, the author had those paintings to look at, but I can look at them too. And so I've got the old iPod going as I'm reading the description of each of these characters. Or and during the story, they walk into a house and they see the painting on the wall and they describe it, and I can see it. And it just adds a really nice added dimension to the storytelling that I hear in my head and the imagery that I'm imagining on the page. Uh, I really enjoyed that. Uh, I'm, kind of, I'm, like, I'm there right with the people. So uh, two good reasons to read a historical fiction. Uh, it's a very enjoyable book, and I don't have it in the library, but I'm going to get it soon.